As one of the most popular models in Australia, you should recognise this face. No, no, not mine, it's a Mazda CX-5. While a lot of attention goes to the higher model grades in the CX-5 range, we've organised a basic model to see whether there's merit in buying at the entry level. Here's what you can expect from the 2023 Mazda CX-5 Max Sport. Mazda updated the CX-5 medium SUV earlier in 2022 to keep it fighting fit against new arrivals such as the Kia Sportage, Toyota RAV4 and Hyundai Tucson. You can tell a new CX-5 by its restyled front end which incorporates a set of new headlights, new wheel designs and rear taillights. You might have to be a train spotter to notice the differences, but as facelifts go, the CX-5 does look fresher and stocks a host of new kit and features to keep it in line with its competitive set. The Max Sport benefits from new features such as a 7-inch digital instrument cluster, head-up display, LED headlights and an 8-inch infotainment display. It also gets redesigned seats for improved comfort and interior materials which are set to reduce road noise. It's about $1,500 more expensive than the old 2021 model, but it does get a larger 2.5 litre engine as compared to its predecessor. Outputs of 140 kilowatts and 252 newton meters are sent to the front wheels in our model, though you can upgrade to all-wheel drive for an extra $2,500. All in, you'll be paying $38,190 before on-road costs, or about 42 and a half grand drive away if you're in Melbourne like me. Come check out the interior to see how it feels for the money. Inside, you've got an interior which presents most of the same to the one of old, though as mentioned, it does get this new headliner to absorb more noise and these new seats which feel comfy to sit in. They do pinch your body a little bit, so bigger people might not love the fit, but it's not to the extent that you're left uncomfortable. Key bits you'll receive on our Max Sport model grade are dual zone climate control, satellite navigation, auto dimming rear mirror, LED lights and paddle shifters. It gets an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, though it is only touch when you're stationary. You can't use those touch functionalities when you're on the move. I'm a fan of the rotary controller down on the dash and it is easy to use with good shortcuts around, but the software itself when presented on the screen does look a little bit drab, especially when it comes to maps. On safety, the CX-5 retains its 5-star ANCAP score, though this was recorded way back in 2017. It's uncertain Mazda will get the same top mark score for the CX-5 if it was tested to stricter 2022 protocols. The car does get equipment including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and traffic sign recognition. It also gets autonomous emergency braking. There's a good amount of storage to the cabin with this small cubby in front of the shifter here, two cup holders, door pockets for odds and ends and a decent sized centre console bin. My driving position is pretty good and I've got good vision going out of the cabin and when looking behind. I'm very comfy in this space here. In the back seat you've got a good amount of room, though my knees are a little bit constrained by this seat here, which is in my driving position. You've also got a good amount of headroom and footroom, and it was pretty easy to get in the back here thanks to a nice wide door aperture. In terms of amenity, you've got rear air vents in the back here, map pockets and a pair of shallow door bins. You've also got this centre armrest which folds down to reveal two cup holders and two USB ports. You open up a manually operated boot to reveal a 438 litre space, though like most medium sized SUVs there isn't that much space for your head, especially if you're taller. The seats in the back do fold in a 40-20-40 format to reveal a full 1340 litre space and there is a space saver spare under the floor there. Let's start with what's under the bonnet. Of the four engines of the Mazda CX-5 range, the Max Sport gets a 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder which outputs 140 kilowatts and 252 newton meters to the front wheels. Those sort of outputs are likely what you'll be vying for in a medium SUV as anything less can feel a little lethargic and underpowered for the amount of weight these cars can carry, especially when laden with passengers, gear and whatnot. I can tell you that power delivery in this CX-5 is nice and strong with a pull right up to redline resulting in swift acceleration and no wheel slip. If you're solely spending time around town, you'd be smart to go for this front wheel drive model rather than get the all wheel drive. Overtakes are dispatched pretty easily and the car even puts out a nice little engine note without being overly drony. Somewhat annoying is the 6 speed transmission made as that engine. While it is pretty swift to change gears, it really does feel as though it's geared more for economy rather than outright power. You really do have to put your foot down into it to get it to change down a gear and go. It's got a sweet steering quality which feels nice and firm when you turn it in towards a bend and its body control is really well managed without getting too upset by mid-corner bumps. 
Mazdas are known as some of the more dynamic products in their competitive space, and it still feels like that in this CX-5. On ride comfort, I've done a lot of kilometres in this CX-5, and I've come away impressed with how nicely it smooths over little imperfections and things like train tracks. It might not stock the same ride comfort as something like the Hyundai Tucson, for example, but the CX-5 does maintain a good balance between dynamic ability and around town comfort, which adventurous families will love. I'm pretty comfortable inside this cabin with my tall frame, though I wish I was sat just a little bit lower in situ. Vision is good mostly throughout, though Mazdas have this weird quirk with this side mirror which feels a little bit too zoomed in. It makes it difficult to gauge your surroundings. I've done a couple hundred kilometres of testing this CX-5 over varying road conditions and come away with a combined fuel use of 8.4 litres per 100. Well. After all these years, does the Mazda CX-5 still deserve to be duking it out at the top of the sales charts with the Toyota RAV4? Yeah, I'd say so. It's easily one of the more engaging cars to drive in its segment and remains comfortable enough for running everyday duties. It might have some age-related pitfalls like the outdated infotainment screen and tired dash design, but the CX-5 has kept pace well with a rapidly changing competitive set. Do your research to get a good deal and you'll no doubt be happy with a Mazda CX-5 purchase. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all our uploads. And if you want to know more about the 2022 Mazda CX-5 Max Sport, be sure to check out the review on drive.com.au.